Okay, we're gonna head back to our arrangement. And so far, I've only added a couple of articulations. You can see there on the tuba part that I've added a couple of staccatos, but I'm gonna show you that process real fast here. So I'm gonna back up my track here and we're gonna listen to the first four measures. All right, so those first four measures, most of the no notes are really short, so I'm gonna assume that all of them are really short. Now, when I go through and mark all of these, I notice that basically every eighth note is short. And I'm gonna leave that 16th note alone for a second. All right, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna double check, find my articulation um, notes here. Oh, that's right. I think it's in this little menu here. Okay, so these are staccatos. And I'm going to go ahead and add a staccato to each one of those. Okay, I've gone through and I've added staccatos to all of my eighth notes and quarter notes in this little passage for the bass line. The reason I'm doing that now is because copying and pasting for later use will then include all of the necessary articulations to make this sound authentic. I don't want to have to go through and add an articulation for every single note in the entire arrangement. That would be extremely, um, extremely long process and, and it's not quite worth doing that now if I'm just going to be able to copy and paste anyway. Um, music is made up of a lot of patterns, especially rock and pop music. So, okay, I did leave the 16th notes here. Um, if you look in the first measure, I have two eighths um, three eighths right in a row, and then a sixteenth note on its own. Now um, the rest of these are written as a dotted a dotted eighth note to a sixteenth note, so I might as well go and change that to a dotted note. There we go. Then it'll look the same in every single measure. I help my musicians out. As long as they play it short, it'll be good. So as I listen to this passage once more, I notice that that 16th note is kind of a long note actually, even though it's a very short note as far as rhythm is concerned. So we're going to listen to that and I'm going to see if I can choose an articulation that matches. Okay, so the first three notes obviously match up nicely. Dit, dit, dit. Now, my longest articulation that I can use is a tenuto mark, which is a do articulation. So I'm going to add a tenuto to every single one of those 16th notes. There's a tenuto there. I'm going to scroll down to my next page, get the next measures. Now, if I were to sing this part along with the recording, it would sound pretty, pretty darn close. Dit, 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 do, dit, dit, dit. So let's take a listen once and then we'll play our version and see if it matches. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the top and zoom out just a little bit. And let's play. <laughs> That sounds pretty darn close. Okay, before we go on to our baritone or trombone range instrument, we're gonna double check our arranging process. We wrote out the bass part, and we did that by listening for the lowest part, typically the bass guitar, and we used our reference instrument, in my case the piano, to figure out one small chunk at a time. I wrote out what I heard to the best of my ability and double checked it by pressing play on the software and playing along on the piano as well. I then went on to create as much authenticity as possible by using the four articulations, da, dit, do, and dot. Now it's time to... Okay, we are ready to move on to our baritone and innermost voices. The innermost voices like the baritone voice and the alto voice are some of the harder voices to hear when you're listening to a piece and harder to transcribe because they are not the extremes they create the inside voices of the harmony. So the bass line is the lowest note, and that's usually easy to hear because you're listening for the lowest thing. 
while the melody and the soprano lines, those are some of the higher parts, and typically those are easier to pick out as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to the very beginning of this part. Now I already know my bass line is here. So I know what that note is going to sound like. My next step is to find out what I'm going to hear up above that, but not too far. So I'm going to listen just above that bass line and see what I can hear. Okay, we're going to try that one more time. I'm hearing a note that's right up here. Da, 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 da. It's about a fifth above. See if you can hear that in this track. I tried to sing it along there for you. I'm going to give you one more time on your own without my voice. See if you can hear that. Now, if I can sing that without much trouble, I can figure it out on my instrument real easy. So here's that bass line again. And I'm hearing a note that's up here. Now I noticed that that is a fifth away from our bass note. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to make an assumption here that maybe this is a pattern. And when my bass note moves from here to here, my baritone note might move from here to here. So we're going to see what that sounds like when I play that. I think that sounds pretty good. Now the next one goes up by a step. I think that's right too. And then all the way down. I think I got it. So what's really cool in this case, I should be able to copy my bass line and transpose it up a fifth for my baritone line. So I'm going to go ahead. And... Okay, we're ready to copy out um, our music here. I've already copied this first two these first two measures, but I'm going to show you the next two. So I'm going to highlight the section I want to copy, and I'm going to push the copy button down here where it just said copy. I'm going to click on the note that I want the passage to start on and hit paste. Paste is that middle button of those three right there. It has a little check mark in the middle. So I've gone ahead and um, pasted that information. My next step is to take that passage and move it up a fifth. Now I could go ahead and drag every note, but that's going to be a little slow in the long run. What I want to be able to do is use the tools, and that, that tool that I'm going to look for is transpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this passage, and I'm going to hit transpose. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to interval, because that's most useful for me right now. And I'm going to go, it already says up, but if I wanted to take things down in range, I could select that option. I know I need to go up a fifth, and I want it, want it to be a perfect fifth. So if I need to as well, I could go up many more octaves, but I'm going to keep it in the same octave. And we're going to see what it sounds like. I'm going to hit transpose down here on the bottom. Okay. So it took it up a fifth. And I'm thinking, actually, you know what? Maybe I should take that up an octave. So I'm going to go up uh, another octave. So I'm going to leave it in unison, go up an octave, hit transpose. OK. We're going to go back, and we're going to do this for the top as well. Transpose. This time, I might be able to do it all at the same time. I'm going to go up a fifth and up an octave. Transpose. There we go. Let's take a listen to that and see if was see what it sounds like. Cool. That sounds just like the rhythm part. Let's check it out. Cool. There's one last part for me to transcribe in these first few measures. 
and let's see if we can figure out that tiny little beep or click. Listen really, really high. In, envision like a flute playing. I know that's a concert F sharp or G flat, really, really high. So I'm gonna scroll up and I'm gonna see if I can figure out the rhythm. I think it's the same in every measure. I think it goes one, two, ready, and. I think it comes down on the and a one or on the B2, let's try that. Yeah, I'm gonna put that in the flute because it's it's so high. Okay, so we're gonna... Yeah, we'll leave them up there. Okay, so let's get the right rhythm here. And I know that there's a 16th, or a, an eighth note rest rather. And then that high F sharp one. And then we have beat three and four. Yeah, the and of three and the and of four. So one and, three and, and. And, 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 three and, four and. Okay, so I know that that's gonna come in on the and of four, so I'm gonna change that to, and of three, excuse me, so I'm gonna change that to an eighth note. There it is again. I already got a rest on there. Okay, now I did it once and I know it's the same in every measure, so I'm gonna go through the same process. So I've gone through now and um, I wrote out that flute part that I was just talking about. And I've also transcribed a little bit of the melody here at rehearsal mark A. And that's in the trumpet range right now, but um, that might not stay there in the entire arrangement, the final arrangement. And we're just gonna go back to our notes. We're talking here about remaining parts. And the first part, as a reminder, is a bass line in the baritone or bass range. That's like tuba or barry sax or bass clarinet, typically. Rhythm guitar part or harmony in the tenor range or alto range. That's typically tenor saxophone, tenor trombone, um, perhaps bass clarinet and stuff, but getting into more of those types of instruments and alto sax and French horn. Number three, the melody in the alto range or soprano range. That's French horn. That's alto saxophone, getting into clarinet, and then extra special parts. This is really any range, but for my arrangement, that was the flute part that I just wrote. Um, and that is something from the original song that makes it unique and gets that extra layer of, oh yeah, that's from that song. So, in interest of saving your time watching this video, I'm going to skip ahead now to all of my parts put together. Good luck transcribing, get as much as you can, and we'll catch you on the flip side.